Hey everybody, how you doing? Get settled in. I, I, I'm, I'm lighting up the uh, the stuff here a second or two early. I'm having a little monitor trouble. I just want to make sure all my my technical mumbo jumbo is in is in order. Uh, can I just get a, a confirmation from my team that the that the dis, that the the video displays okay? Yeah, I know you see me, but. Is, how's the quality? I need to know what the, is the quality. I, d don't don't mind us. <laughs> yeah, I know you can see me on YouTube. It, the the video, the image, is it is it like it normally is? Is the quality of the, of the video like it normally is? Get in, say hi. It's good. It, is it usual? Give me the word usual if it's like it usually is. Yes. Okay. All right. So sorry about all that. I'm having some monitor problems with my display. I think everything will be fine, but I ha would have had to reset a whole bunch of stuff and I don't like being late. Okay. Hey, it's Andy helping you build a career you love. Welcome to the show. Thanks for popping by. If you're here with me live, get in the chat, say hi, let me know who you are, let me know what you do, let me know where you're from, put some question marks in front of your questions. And if you're in one of my programs, let me know that. Uh, I got a great package for you today on how to get stuff done. But this is, it, I really would have loved to have titled this How to Get Stuff Done Really Fast with High Quality and Make It the Right Stuff. I mean, that's what this is about. How do we produce, whether it's, it's deliverables at work, projects around our house, whether it's our job search too. I've got, I've got some really good analogies here for you today as it relates to your job search as well. So this is, this is going to be a little bit of everything. I'm really excited about this talk. And if you are here with me live, we're doing this in December. If you're watching this on the recording, I'm not really sure when you're seeing it, but I'm doing this in the month of December 2020 because I really want you to have a lot of firepower around action, getting things done, getting in motion, staying in motion, putting the gas pedal down. So that's what this is about. Now, what's the issue for a lot of us where, when we struggle to, to actually get things done, right? There's a lot of reasons why that happens. Uh, you know, for, for sake of argument, the, you know, the big four that come to my mind are, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it. Or I got a bad plan. Maybe I'm, maybe the construction of what I'm doing is not good. Or I'm afraid, right? Show of hands. You know, I'm afraid of the outcome. I'm afraid to put it out there. I'm afraid to be judged. I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid of that. And then batting cleanup. Uh, I can I get a hidey high from all my perfectionists out there, right? So so it's got to be perfect. It's got to be an A plus. Otherwise, I don't want to release it into the world. And being a perfectionist is a I mean to me it it literally uh, it, it is a disease because it really does prevent you from giving your yourself to the world. In many many cases, we're going to talk about this. So so that's what comes to mind. So what I, what I did was I, I created this talk for you today about the mindset I use and how I think about getting things done. And then I actually reverse engineered a little formula for you that I've never shown before, but it's what I do in everything that I do. And it's a very simple formula, five part formula that you can use. So you're going to get, you're going to get that as well. And then we'll do, we'll do a Q and A if you're, if you're here with me live. So get in the chat, say hi. Uh, and I got a, I got a little question for you. Um, and, and this is really uh, just so I could give something away. Uh, but you see, you see these books. You see these books. Okay, you got Interview Intervention, the first book I wrote, and this is the Hiring Prophecies. This is the third book I wrote. Both of these books, they're text heavy, right? They're like normal books. And I wrote uh, this one in less than forty days. And this one took less than 50 days. It's almost 100 pages more than, than the other one. And I, in the back of the book, in, in, in the back of both of these books, is an, is an afterword. Uh, and I'm not going to tell you what page they're on because then you flip to the page. But underneath the title afterward, there's seven words that I wrote. They're the same seven words in both the books. Who can tell me what those words are? I'm going to take a sip of my tea. And then tell me what those seven words are. You got to go seven for seven in the order I said it. 
Um, and then when I'm done with sipping this tea, I'm going to tell you what it is. So hopefully somebody gets the prize. But um, it just goes to show that, you know, things don't need to be an ordeal to release them out in the, into the public. And there's probably uh, not, you know, work-related for me, writing books was, is the writing part, the mechanics part of it is, is, is not stressful, but getting them out into the world because of what you need to go through, it, it, it's pretty nerve-wracking. But so the, 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 the seven words that, that, are, that are in this book, and I, I know this one's on page 179. So, you know, it says for me, finish, finished was better than perfect. Okay, so for me, finished was better than perfect. And I go on to say, you know, I could have made this book twice as long I could have. I could have made it twice as long. I could have made it three times as long. I could have included everything under the sun related to, to, to interviewing or to, or to hiring people. And I could have developed it for years and years and years, but I didn't want to do that because then it would have taken longer to get into your hands. So I, uh, I, I, that's the spirit of what we're going to be talking about. So how do you get that mindset? And how do you, not, it's not just the mindset because you, be, you could be hasty. Um, Beth, my bet is that my Beth Travert got that. Uh, well, I, we'll have to check. We'll, we'll 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 audit the chat. We'll audit the chat when, when, I'm, when I'm done with the talk. But it, it's it's. I want you to think about this. Okay, so so um, there's a couple of things I really want you to. I, I want to burn in your brain. I mean, I really really want to really 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 want to uh, re really really want to want to want to call out. Um, I, I say this a lot, but I want you to I want you to really look at this. Waiting for your A game when your B game improves lives. So, so this really goes to the perfectionists, right? This really goes to people who are nervous about what they put out in the world. And I think it's important for you to recognize that, that your B game, even your C game, will not only improve a lot of other people's lives and companies, your company's lives and your customers' lives and so on, but it will also improve your life. And I think you'll, you'll find that out as we go through, as we go through a lot of this. So I can never, you have seen five years worth of content from me, actually four years uh, and a couple, and a couple of my four and a half years worth of content on my YouTube channel. Not one single time can I point to any video, any workshop, any webinar, any series where I would have said that is the complete, that is the complete A game. That is my complete A game, because I, I would never, you would never have seen anything, right? So I want, I want you to think about that. That's what I'm talking about is, is, is being in motion. And the, the other thing about that. And I want to I want to give you a broader context to look in. I always say to you, I said this in the other book that I didn't hold up, but out of reach, but in sight, my goal setting book, that what you do every day matters more than what you do every once in a while, and that's true. But the dailies matter, but the compilation is is most important. So what do I mean by that? So I want you to think about when I look at anything that I do and anything that you do, virtually everything that we do fits in, in a bigger in a bigger context. It's a step to create a piece of something that fits into a larger thing. I'm gonna design this web, web screen and then I have to code it and it fits into a system that allows somebody to do something. My YouTube channel, every talk, every live show like this or recording like this that lives on is a brick. Now, this is a daily for me, right? This is just something I do every day or every week or whatever, but when you look at the compilation, I, I focus on the entirety. So every moment that I'm creating something that gets released into the world on any given day is just a brick that goes into, into the house that I'm building. That's my YouTube channel in this example, right? So if you, you just think about it as a whole, so all the pieces, while I could certainly uh, you know, the other day we talked about on Tuesday, if you saw the video I released uh, on impatience, somebody asked me, New York Style asked me to speak to impatience. I could have sat at my lovely work table right over there and spent six hours writing out an entire script related to everything that I knew about impatience and patience and all that good stuff and then brought it to you one week 
But if I did that with every single topic that matters to you or is important to you, you, you it, two horrible things would happen. Number one, it would severely limit the amount of information you're taking in and learning from me. All right, that's, that's bad to me. You're better off getting 80% from me rather than me spending five times as long to try to give you 100. Okay, but in the overall context of what I'm building for you, my YouTube channel and the Mile Walk Academy and the other things that we do, right? When, when the entire compilation is viewed together, I call it an A, right? But on any given day, I might not have an A game. So, so I just, it's, it, it's a way for you to look at a lot of, and we're going to talk about some specific examples here too, but it, it's a way for you to conceptualize that get in motion, get the action rolling. And I'll tell you, I'll show you how to, how to think through this, but the way, the way that I would say that and the, 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 where I live, like on a, on a continuous basis from every project that we do, every workshop that we do, every product that I deliver, every monthly leadership coaching session that I have and so on. Here's the combination. Here's where you need to live. And I'm going to define these for you. So quality and speed. All right. These two things are what you need to focus on. Now, listen, folks, I'm not talking about you know building airplanes here, right? Like uh, if the thing doesn't fly and stay and stay in the air, that's a problem. But I'm talking about for 99% of everything that we do, for 99% of us, it's if you focus on quality and speed to get things out in the, into the world that can live and breathe and get worked with and evaluated and improved and so on, you are going to be producing a ton of stuff. And I'm going to give you the mechanics here in a few minutes, but I just, I want to make sure that you get, you get what I'm talking about here is that, that everything that you do, when you look at it in the bigger context, it's much easier for you to be comfortable with releasing and getting things done and putting them out into the world that way. So I just, I, uh, I think it's, I think it's really, I think it's really important. And when, when, when we talk a little bit about, about your job search, because uh, I know a lot of you are job searching, and I, I, I like to bring the job searching theme into here, is that when you think about your job search, right? The job search itself, the, a lot of what you, you guys are going through, is made up of, of, of many steps, right? It's, but a lot of you agonize over the components along the way. The resume has to be perfect. The cover letter has to be perfect. The email I'm about to send has to be perfect. Your goal, which I know you know this, is not to write a perfect resume. That's not, that's not even a goal, right? What's the goal? The goal, is, and the goal is not just to get a job, right? The goal is to get the best job for you, the right job, hopefully the dream job in the right career with the right company, right? That's the goal. So, so the amount of time that a lot of you tend to spend uh, writing your resume and then perfecting your resume. Think about how much excessive time that you are spending trying to get a resume perfect when you probably, and I'm not even exaggerating here for effect, especially if you're in one of my programs, could probably write the resume in 30 minutes and have it 98% there. Okay, so, but what do we do? We spend time. We read and read and read and we retweak. And then we want to go seek out opinions from people you shouldn't be seeking opinions from. And then you start going to use the tools and you start matching keywords and you start looking at job descriptions and all this other stuff. And you're spending a ton of time in this one area when you are preventing progress. That is actually not getting something done when you are working it, working it, working it. If, if the resume in a matter of a calendar takes longer than a day, it's taking you too long. Okay, so I want you to think about what I just said there. Now, it's just an example, but I want to use this example in the context of, of, of everything that we, that we do. Think about, think about why the job search challenge, I know a lot of you were with me, I know some of you obviously weren't, where we just spent a week, a couple of weeks ago, right, the week, week before Thanksgiving, where I was teaching you that it, it's really important to be consistent and continually produce products every day that can be used to target three companies, target three people, one at each, one at each company or, or, or somebody who could be a conduit to get you there and you need to send out your three messages. Three messages to three people to three companies. As you become focused on attaining those daily goals, 
you are constantly being in motion. That's why the job search challenge is so effective. So that's what I'm talking about. Yes, draft a quality cover letter, but you can do that pretty dang quickly. And I've given you a lot of templates, even the free stuff. So you put it together, but you won't know if it's great while it sits there on your desk or while you're trying to perfect it. So what do we what do we what do we do about this? How do we how do we look at the mechanics of all of this so that you're actually getting things done, they're good enough to get in motion to help you attain the ultimate goal. All right? Some of you get jobs without cover letters, right? Even without resumes. All right? So 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 let's go into the formula here. So I thought about I thought about everything that I do. And I thought, how can I break it down for them in you know a number of, a number of steps? Uh, I, I I thought of this the other day, and when I was really just thinking about what I do, and I'm going to go through each one of these and how it relates. There's basically five things in this order. Okay, there's unif unifying what you do. There's oops, sorry, this is backwards. Taking action, right? Taking a step, right? There's evaluating. There's collecting data, and then there's iterating. And you might be thinking, well, Andy, don't I have to collect the data? before I can evaluate. Well, let's let's get into each one of these and I'll clear this up. So what do I mean what do I mean by unification? Well, if you think about everything you do in the greater context of what you're doing. So for 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 you, for let's say take take your take your, you know, your your job search example. If your goal is to get the right job and you're focused on the end goal, you can look back at everything you do with the context of your ultimate goal. And every step that you take is just part of a bigger, bigger program for you. So for me, going back to my YouTube example, do you ever notice about my YouTube channel? I'm sure you look at, I, I know it hurts me when you when you look at other trainer stuff, but I, I'm all for you doing whatever you got to do. But look at my channel. Have you noticed that all the components of all the things that I teach, so there's job searching stuff that I teach, right? Finding the right job. And then there's personal development and career development. So career, career growth, leadership growth, that motivational stuff, that kind of stuff. But you notice within those that the job searching stuff, if you look at the channel, there's, well, there's all the self-awareness stuff that you got to get in order and there's all the resume stuff and there's all the cover letter stuff and the interviewing, the job search stuff and the interviewing stuff and the salary stuff and the career changing stuff and so on and so forth, right? It's balanced. That is not by accident, right? That was something that I thought about a long time ago and just continually fill in at a pretty even rate. Now, when you look at the long-term goal, to agonize over any one video really becomes, it doesn't even become something that ever enters my mind. It's just go shoot the thing, talk about them. They ask questions about this, go, go give it to them. Right, so so that's what I mean about when you think about it as one unit, and everything needs to work together to feed to feed it. And and job searching in and of itself, where your goal might be to find the right job, but I would say it's even bigger than that. It, it's an it's a golden opportunity for you to learn many skills that you can bring with you throughout your life. But more than anything, I want you to look at it as one unit, not a series of things, not a series of. I got to do this and then this and then this. Yes, those are the steps, but you might start interviewing with one company and not get it. And then you go on to interview with another company. That is not two separate things. All of that feeds one common goal. I need you to look at it from a mindset and a mechanics perspective with, with unity in mind. Then you get in motion. Okay, so I'm going to draft this cover letter. I got I to gotta draft it. And Andy said, I got to send it out. Get it done. Get it and get it in motion because... You will not know if it's good until what? You can do these bottom two things, right? So as you start to send stuff out, get version one done. Get version 1.0 done as fast as you possibly can because once version 1.0 is in play and it's living and breathing, it's a lot easier to do version 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, which you're gonna have to do, and then version two, and so on, right? Uh, the analogy from from my world, uh, you know, the the, the 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 book writing world is you can't edit a blank page, so it's a hell of a lot easier to generate something very quickly and then edit it, generate a book, 
and then and then on you go to the next one and you'll learn so much more whatever it might be but the action needs to be taken quickly so i talked on tuesday on the video if you saw it about being impatient with your action but being patient with your results let's talk about this all right well after the action i've got evaluation but you might be saying well andy don't i need stuff to evaluate well the first thing you need to know is once you put something in motion and you let it live and breathe even though you should be looking at data you have a very limited amount of data right so so the first thing that i want that I, that i want you to do is well pay attention to what happened right what 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 actually happened as a result of what i did so for example for me every week i do this right spend 90 minutes couple hours with you guys every week right then not to mention all the other stuff that that i in, in the programs and the private groups that i have i watch every minute of every show usually multiple times i call it check and tape right but i know it's not tape it's on the internet and it's all digital whatever but but i'm looking at well okay well what, what what were they asking me are there questions that repeat is that a real common issue uh what variations of the questions are right so the observation well how did i answer it then i have to critique myself was i fluent was i smooth did i include all the stuff i should have told them right like like those kind of things so for you i'm writing a cover letter i'm sending it out what can be evaluated just as an example i'm putting the white paper together right that in a series of 10 white papers or this is this this is the this is the code or the design or the whatever right or process that i'm building in 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 in, in it's just one cog in the wheel right so 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 look at it well is is the cover letter itself good okay well then is who i'm sending it to good the right people the right person the right time the right whatever the right day of the week hour of the day whatever like all these things can be evaluated even without the data but then but then here's here's the really here's the really fun part then as you start and you continue to act sorry about this <laughs> backwards and evaluate you're collecting more and more data okay so so let's talk about you know we're we're in and, and, and some caution here too so let's talk about a couple of examples so you're collecting data right so so let's go back to the job search the job search challenge part of what you're doing and if you don't know what the job search challenge is i do um well it's only like 325 more days till the next event but i do have a an abridged version on the youtube channel which i'm sure will include or they can you know include in the link here but you think about you know all right it's it's, it's monday i'm gonna i'm gonna andy said target three organizations find three people one in each of those organizations send them each a letter or send somebody a, a, a message and i'm gonna send it out and you send it out on a monday and you go oh for three okay now that's data right and you're probably thinking i don't know andy guys sound smart but this thing doesn't right the job search challenge doesn't work that's an evaluation based on that limited data okay you know what let me try it again another day tuesday goes by you go oh for three again you're oh for six now now you're probably thinking oh good lord what this is nonsense it doesn't work right that's an evaluation that's a determination but you're probably thinking well andy sounds like a nice guy and he's got a lot of those testimonials so i'm just going to go through the week we'll try to get 15 of these out and see what happens wednesday goes you get zeros but thursday rolls around and a couple of people get back to you and then friday one more person gets back to you and now i'm your best bud again and you're thinking three for three three out of 15 that's 20 percent. that's data right that is data but there is an interpretation element that needs to go along with what you collected because on the surface you might be now evaluating it based on the data you're collecting but what if i looked at that and i said well hang on a second let me let me look at three out of 15 sounds pretty okay right maybe it should be 10 out of 15 maybe maybe zero i don't know so we look at it and i notice that well 13 of those messages were to mid-level managers in large organizations and you went one for 13 and then but these two over here were vice presidents in small to medium-sized companies and you went 100 percent there that's data too right and you might be asking yourself well should i should i double down should i just start contacting those people let's park that example for a second because i want to i want to come back to it when we get to iteration but let's take take something from 
my life. This is a little peek under the curtains of something that just happened that many of you were involved in. We just did this job search challenge, this, this five days that I spent with you on the YouTube channel and Facebook and LinkedIn, and I had a big promotion for my job search boot camp, and a lot of people got in. And uh, Kara and I, and when I say Kara and I, I really mean Kara, went through and she poured through all the data for all the people that bought the program. And one of the things that we did this time was we uh, heavily advertised the Job Search Challenge, the free program, on Facebook to, to invite more people into our community. And as we normally do, we send messages out on LinkedIn and, and, and some of the other sites uh, or learning people. And then we also, obviously, on the YouTube channel, we had the shows and I let you know. So we started to look at how many people who participated in the event bought. And it was over 5% which sounds like a pretty good number. Um, and, and I would think that most trainers would think that that is. But then I said, well, that really doesn't tell me the, the, the story that I need to understand. There were people that were new to my community that came from Facebook. And then there were people that were new to my community that came from LinkedIn and YouTube. So less than a month. They didn't really know me very well. So how many of them bought? Well, the people that came from Facebook, only 2% of them bought. Well, the people that came from YouTube and LinkedIn, Almost 6% of them bought. That's pretty good. But wait, those people that were in our community already that had been following me for more than a month, they bought at 11%. Okay? But overall, when you added up all the numbers, it was almost 6% of the people who participated actually enrolled in, the, in my program. And, you know, if I asked you, well, if, if, you, were, if you were the boss of, of Mile Walk, what would you do? And... You know, you might think, well, should I, you know, just go after and spend more time with those 11 percenters? Or maybe I could just nurture those six percenters more. But well, why not go after the Facebook folks and try to try to find more people that way? Right. So if if your if your goal is to make money, which is actually not my goal, my goal is to help you. And in order to do that, it's to build a solid business to actually have a balanced uh, array of platforms that I could use to introduce myself to the world. What happens if YouTube goes down, collapses, does something that limits your ability to find me? Those things that are out of my control. So if my, my goal is to balance it, my iteration, which is going to my improvement, has everything to do with what is my ultimate long-term goal, okay? So in my case, uh, I can't go after all three of those universes at, at the same time because there's only one of me and one of Kara and one of Stacy. We have limited resources and we have, we have a number of things that we do. So I take it one at a time, which is how I like to do things. So we will figure that out based on our goals. Okay, now let's go back to iteration as we keep moving forward for you. Well, that person in the job search challenge that has three people that got back to them, the answer could be, well, stop those people like the, the 13, only one of them were getting back to you, and, and, and go after the people that are getting back to you at 100% rate. Well, that's fine and good if your goal is to work for a small to medium-sized company or you don't mind which type of organization you work for. But what if your goal is to work for the large company? Well, now you have to iterate differently. Okay, so it's not just right action and producing stuff. If you don't look at your, your exercise as a unified process to attain a particular goal, that shapes your behavior in how you get in motion, how you look at things, and how you ultimately iterate. Okay, this is very, very important. Because if you, a lot of you, I know this by the questions you ask me, you're iterating in the wrong spot. Okay, you're, you're spending a lot of time and, and spinning your wheels, and you might be perfecting that resume, or you might, how many of you every single week ask me, how long, when can I follow up? Can I follow up? They're not getting back to me. They're not moving fast. You're iterating in the wrong spot, okay? That's not gonna get you to your goal by chasing somebody who's not getting back. It's just an example. 
but you follow what I'm saying. It's important that everything has to be looked at with the right lens. So it's not just the right mindset and it's not just the right activity and it's not just keeping at it and iterating. It's iterating the right stuff in the right sequence. Okay, this is, it's, it's very, very important. You've got to resist the urge to, you know, when I said, well, you know, going back to the action about putting the resume together and you might be saying, well, Andy, well, I need a good resume. I need you to know if your resume is good. And the only way we're going to know if the resume is good is if you get it out into the world. Because then what happens? Then you can do these things, right? Then you can evaluate, you can collect more data. If I would make all my adjustments as a business owner based on this one promotion we ran, that would not be very smart. It's one data point, except I have a lot of data points. I have data points because I've been doing this for a while. But you have to get in and pay attention to what's happened, which means from the time you send in your application to the, or the time you do whatever you do, you need to start collecting the data. Who did I send this to? What did I send them? What was the format? What was the medium I used? Did I send it on LinkedIn? Did I send it via email? Did I send it on a Monday? Did I send it on a Tuesday? Did I send it to the director? Did I send it? You know what I mean? Like all that stuff needs to be collected. And until you're in motion for a while, you won't have all the data. So you're going to have to evaluate based on the limited data you have. But if you're paying attention, you'll start to notice the trends. All right. Now, this is, I do want to call the mistake out, okay? The saturation. And I already alluded to this. So it's a lot of you need to be careful. And this is just as it relates to your job search, but this is really related to anything, right? What do we do? We get saturated because we keep trying to focus on something that either, it's saturation can happen in one or two formats. It can happen in the example I just gave you about like, well, I'm spending too much time on my resume. I'm spending too much time following up. I'm spending too much time, uh, you know, tweaking this email or this cover letter. Okay. That's getting saturated and bogged down in one area. The other thing could be, it could be getting saturated on the outcome. So going back to my YouTube example, going back to the breadth of what's in my YouTube channel as, as, a, as an example, you see the balance. Well, there are a lot of trainers that call themselves career coaches, but every week they seem to put out a resume writing video. But that's okay, but that they're a resume writer, right? They're a resume coach. They're not a career coach. That's That must not be their goal or they're misadvertising or they're spending so much time focusing in that example, maybe on what well, YouTube likes resumes more than it likes job searching or job interviewing or whatever. So they're going for clicks. That's not good or healthy either, okay? For you, are you getting so myopic on your options, the companies you want to target, the industries you're willing to look at? Those can, that can be saturating as well. Okay, so you got to do everything in the context of the goal. And that happens when you unify everything. You look at everything as one unit. And everything that you do, all of these actions, Everything that happens doesn't happen. It's a pawn being moved off the chessboard, okay? Everything goes back to this, and the lens that you need to have is with the ultimate goal in mind, okay? So just to recap really quick, don't wait for your A game when your B game will change lives, okay? Really, the dailies matter, and if you want to make sure that you are achieving and, 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 and fulfilling your A game, that's done at the end. Okay, that's done at the end of your life, all right? The dailies and the consistency matter. Consistency trumps talent. And 80% every day of, of quality product, 80% good, as good as you could do, is going to far supersede when you aggregate it all together. It really, it really will. That job search challenge, you do not need a 100% perfect cover letter. You need to send the damn cover letter, okay? And you need to send three a day. That's going to outwork the person who waits till Friday to send three messages out because they tinkered all week on the, red, on the cover letter, okay? And then when you get in and you start moving, think Think big picture, unify everything. Then what you want to do, get in motion, evaluate, collect your data, and keep evaluating. And then make your iterations based on what's happening in the context, the right lens, of the great goal, of the, of the big goal. Okay? Now, I hope you enjoy that. But wait, I got one thing I got to do. So Kara is telling me before we go that Beth, my Beth Trevart, 
is a boot camper. How about a year in my leadership coaching program for you, my dear? Uh, join me on December 11th, where we're, we're going to be going through reflection. I hope you can make it, and I hope you enjoy that uh, $300 gift for knowing what the words were in the back of my book. Okay, uh, I hope that serves you. I loved bringing that to you. I hope that was a a, a, a nice, a little bit of a different way to look at the mechanics of what you do in your life. Give you a little pe peek and you know, kind of lifted my hood uh, or covers, lifted the covers up, and uh, I tried to tie it into your job search. I was really, I was really going for the whole kit caboodle today. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that. All right, watching me on the recording. I'll see you next week. And for those of you that are here, let's do some Q and A. And what'd that take me? Okay, big time. Love, love, love. I love you back, kiddo. Okay. All right, let me see where we are. I got John Bailey up top. And I got my dog snorting behind me. Hey, you guys digging the... Well, my, 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 my private group has seen the tree with the... Can, how cool is that? My little dachshund pillow. See that? <laughs> I got a tree over there. I got a tree back there. That's two of the five trees. There's a tree in my wife's office. There's a tree in our, our family room. And there's a tree in our bedroom. And they're all lit up all day. All right. Uh, all right. John Bailey from Everything is Bigger in Texas. Limited success. Uh, emails thus far. But a couple of referrals. Awesome. Keep rolling. Get Harrison Peterson. How you doing? Question. Great day today. Job search activity from two weeks ago. I have my fourth and fifth interviews of the week today. My late afternoon interview is my first ever tech interview. Tips how not to get stuck. Yes. Kat Harrison Peterson. Now, on page 109 in this book is the afterword. Maybe put it to memory in case I recall that question again. But on page 58 of this book, do you guys love how I could just pull the page number right out? Okay, on page 58 of this book that I give away for free anywhere in the world, if you chip in a few bucks, I'll mail it to you, even in Perth, Australia, which is the farthest place on the planet from me, for seven bucks. Um, on page 58, there is a question uh, in, inside the Silver Bullet interview chapter called How Do You Educate Yourself? The reason, uh, now, it, they're not going to ask you Cat, how do you educate yourself? I'm just pointing you to where I want you to go in the passage I want you to read because there's variations of that questions and there's the three-part answer I always want you to do whenever you get stuck. And tech people or tech screens where they're really asking you a how-to uh, and they want you to recall techniques or things of that nature are very, very, it's very, very easy to get hung up if you are either A, unfamiliar with what they're asking, or B, it's, it, you're rusty, okay? So, so what you wanna make sure is if you don't have the experience, haven't worked with that part for you of Salesforce or something in that nature, then what you need to do is you need to talk about, I, I've yet to do that, so you gotta get, you gotta get that off your, off your tongue right away. The next part of the response is, but I have done this, where you're looking for something analogous, where you can connect the dots of how I did this here, and here's how it connects to what I would do or what you're asking me. And then the third part of the answer is, and whenever I'm faced with something I don't know, here's the plan I use in order to get up to speed. I go into that more eloquently in the book. I also have a video where I outline all this on how to get the job when you lack the experience. That's usually where you get stuck. Now, I don't know if you're, you know, they're going to ask you something philosophical that you're not, um, that you're not actually going, for, forgive me for a second, the, my watch and phone have been going because I forgot to turn off the, the ringer. Um, you know, just, I don't know if they're going to ask something philosophical that's going to get you stuck, but usually that's when people trip up. Uh-oh, hey, there's my wife. Is Ginger still in her coat? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I, I don't know if you could see her, but she's probably off the couch. But when I started and I was racing in here, my, my girl dog had her little purple jacket on and was sitting on the top of the, the love seat. You know, she's, they're like little cats. Uh, they, they think they're cats, but I think they're just going for their walk and it's kind of, it's kind of a stiff, stiff cold out there. So got to make sure my puppies are, are warm. But Kat, I hope that helps. I, uh, I, I'm surprised uh, if these are the fourth and fifth interviews that you're gonna get stuck. Usually that's early round stuff. 
but I hope that I hope that helps. Adam, I've struggled with how do they benefit headline as there's many. This is my headline so far. I am a distinguished storyteller for people. Uh, you, what are you enabling them to do? If you're a storyteller, you're an entertainer so that they can be more entertained. All right. John Filing, I am a late, I'm at a late stage interview. I saw in one of your videos about presenting a 90 day plan. I probably said that somewhere. Can you expand on what types of subject matter to include? I could if you tell me exactly what it is you do. Um, so, so a couple things here. Uh, we recommend, I recommend, that if you are a either generally senior person in just about anything, running a practice, running a unit, building a practice, things like that, or you are in marketing or sales or somewhere where you've got to bring structure to your, whether it's your team or your job or anything of that nature, I always recommend that you personally go through a 90-day timeline plan of what you would do once you once your boots hit the floor. Okay, like walk in the door, first day on the job, we know you're going to talk to people, we know you're going to get educated, you're going to get the binders figuratively, you're going to get all the stuff, you got to figure out who's who, you got to figure out what's what, and all that good stuff. But I also recommend that you actually put yourself through what would I do in the first 90 days because that is a test for you to know whether you can hit the ground running, whether you would like this job. Uh, it gives you a great vehicle to ask them questions. So, so you got to have this. Now, it's going to be different depending on what your job is. So a, a person who's in marketing who's coming in with a 90-day plan, who's the event planner, is going to be different than the copywriter, is going to be different than the digital marketer. And the salesperson who's coming in to carry a bag is going to be different than the salesperson who's coming in to build a team. So it, a, anybody who's doing this is going to have their own particular activities in that 90-day plan. Everybody needs to have certain activities that include you know, getting the lay of the land, understanding who's who, understanding how I fit in, understanding the people's goals around me. Meaning, that's the marketing team, I'm the sales team, that's the engineering team, how do we all work together? There's all of this stuff that's going to occur in the first month. If, I, if I'm a salesperson, then it's, it's well, I need to understand uh, customers, old customers, latent customers, existing customers, virgin territory, what my territory, like all those things need to occur. So specifically, uh, it's going to vary depending on what your actual function is and where you sit in the organization. But I, I, do, I do recommend that you have one if you're senior and I do not recommend that you build it, walk into an interview and say, hey, do you want to see my 90-day plan? I recommend that you are more either A, nonchalant about it, and I'll, I'll give you an example of what I mean, or B, uh, you are immediately ready to say, I have it when they ask you to put it together. So a couple of things here. If I'm interviewing, I would put a 90-day plan together. I would not put the plan together on the first screening. I would not put the plan together on the first meeting with the hiring official. I would be putting a 90-day plan together after I went through the third round of interviews. No earlier, not really, okay? So, so once I have a better understanding, because putting a 90-day plan together with number one, without any data is, is a waste of time, and number two, I don't wanna waste my time if this company isn't for me. And if requested, I would then decide if I wanted to continue with the interviews. But let's just say you want to go the distance. As you get into, say, the third, fourth rounds, when you're in the interview, if you can get the line of questioning to go a little something like this, you know, I was doing some, some additional prep based on the previous interviews that I had. And I talked to so-and-so. And, I, and, and the combination of, of what you and I talked about earlier and, and they, they, the data they gave me and, and, and because I wanted to make sure that I could hit the ground running and it put myself through a little bit of a simulation of what it would be like to work here in the early months, I put a 90-day plan together for me. Um, if that's something you're interested in seeing, 
I'd be happy to share it. That's one way. Another way is they ask you a question about how you would do something. This is really gold. Like if they say, well, okay, you know, you, once you get that done, then what would you do? Say, well, as a matter of fact, you know, and then you could repeat what I just said and just say, you know, as a matter of fact, I, I, I went through that and I, I put this together. Here, let me show you. And then you pull it out. That's, the, that's gold. Now, if they say, hey, but for next time, hey, John, we want you to bring a, a, a 30, 60, 90 day plan next time we meet. Say, no problem. I already got that done. You want me to send it to you? I could send it to you right now. Like those, those are home runs. Okay, so that's what I would do. Now, you, you also might be thinking, well, if I put a 90 day plan, like, isn't that a lot of work? Well, it depends. I'm working with a woman right now. She's a chief revenue officer. Big time, big time job. I prep her for every interview she goes on. Every, every one. We, we prep, we debrief, we prep the next ones. And we've put a lot, we've, we've worked on presentations together. I, actually, that's one thing I do in the coaching sessions I seem to do a lot of is I have a presentation to give. You know, can you help me? So, so we, I mean, we spent a lot of time and she spent a lot of time, drafted the thing. And then I worked with her and then I went through and poked all the holes and filled in all the gaps in the areas that she needed to add. And then what we did was we templatized it. So I said, okay, now from a generic standpoint, if you are interviewing with a startup that's in its, you know, say B to D round, whatever, use that. And if you're going with somebody that's a little more mature, then you then then add these in there. And then we just made it so that, so now all she does is take the logo off, boom, boom, add in any data that they have, size, revenue, targets, company, you know, uh, customer lists, you know, or number of customers, you know, geographical stuff, you know, things like that. And it's, 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 it's plug and play. So that's, you know, that's something that you could have if that, if that suits you. I know we went on a little bit about this and I wish I could have given you more, more specific data. Uh, but, uh, but I hope, I hope that helps. I really do. Good morning, Sky. Let's see. What do we got here? Oh, sorry. Hang on. Let's, let's move John over. All right, Sky Taylor from Loveland. I'm being moved with San, uh, forward with Sandler Sales and Leadership for an admin position. Awesome. They want me to take a disk and outmatch assessment. Fantastic. What are these tests looking for and how to approach it? Okay. So, Sky and everybody, here's the best answer I'm going to give you about everything, anything that any company says to you, any, any kind, we need you to take a test. We need you to take a personality test. We need to you to take the four quadrant disc test. We need you to take the wonderlick test. We need to take the nonsense test. The only piece of advice I'm giving you is get a good night's sleep. Don't think about it. Go in and take it or on your computer, they'll tell you, hey, you know, log in and take it. Don't try to jimmy it. Don't try to answer what you think. They're, just go. And here's my, here's my thought on this. Any organization that actually uses a test like these to weed you out is a total joke. Okay, it, there is absolutely no way a test is going to determine who is going to be successful in their environment. They think it does. It doesn't. It, it, it really does not. There is, and here's why it doesn't. And it doesn't matter if it's a personality test and it doesn't matter if it's an aptitude test because there's absolutely no way you could possibly simulate how I'm going to behave in your environment with the political nature, the stress level, what I'm dealing with on a given day, is a family member of mine sick, what the economic market looks like, am I worried about your job, my job, and the team? Like, you cannot simulate all the factors that will continually be present as you walk around the office every day. But these, these people want to sell these gimmicky tests um, to organizations that think they work. I've taken, uh, I've taken the DISC test and they're trying to look at your personality type. And what most companies will do is they will take where you are in the four quadrant, like the DISC, for example. I haven't taken the outmatch assessment. 
but that'll tell you, you know, are you are you pairing your management team up properly? Like somebody thinks this personality works best with this personality, right? There's other tests where, you know, I'm, you know, we've got a visionary who is very strategic thinking, but generally that person doesn't isn't action oriented, a la the talk I just gave you. And then we have an I, like an integrator. That person is the doer, the worker bee that actually executes. And if you have a V and an I together, it works. If you have two V's, it never, nothing ever gets done. And if you have two I's, nothing ever can get done because the I's don't know what to do because the V wasn't there to tell them what to do. That's what these, that's what these tests are like. So what they're doing is they're trying to figure out are you a V? Are you an I? Are you a D? Are you an S? Are you a C? And so on. To you, I say, don't worry about it. It just go and take it and have fun. Really, it's these are. And any company who says we're not going to hire you because you're an IS, that wasn't for you. They're putting way too much stock in some nonsense stuff. That's really how I feel about it, people. And we, I, 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 I you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you this story. I was recruiting for a company, 500 people publicly traded company. We were recruiting for them. I was a, I was at the point to where I was I was very successful in recruiting uh, directors, VPs, and senior vice presidents for them. Okay, so now I got a reputation with the organization. The COO says to me, Annie, I want to let you know that uh, going forward, we're going to be having the candidates take uh, the Wonderlick test. It's six tests. Okay, that they decided they wanted to add into this repertoire. I said, Karen, what are you gonna do for stuff's nonsense? She said, no, no, we really believe in all the science behind this and that. And I said, uh, well, how, how are you gonna know if it works? She says, well, we're gonna take the test and give it to all the employees, all 500 people who hadn't, who hadn't taken these yet. And then we're going to benchmark them, and then we'll we'll know because the tests are going to tell us who our star players are, and we're going to know that, and so then we'll be able to tell. T tell you what, bet you the most expensive dinner I can think of that you will not be able to draw the correlation between that fifty question wonder lick test that takes twelve minutes and who your star players are. So we bet, and you bet I ran that bill up seriously. So so sure enough, she calls me back. She's like, yeah, you know, there was really no correlation like we thought. I was like, I tried telling you that, but this stuff doesn't work. So it's fun and you can pay Wonderlick for the test, but it's not going to tell you anything about your employees. Okay. It's going to tell you who knows about how many oranges and apples are in the sack and whatever. So I just really don't, don't sweat these things. I mean, I really cannot say this any more emphatically. Just you got to take them because you got to take them because they're not going to you know, and Sandler of all of all companies, right? Training company. So they I'm sure they think this stuff is good. So that's that's my view on that. Can you tell how I feel about that? All right. Sky, good luck. Oh, this is great. Movie oh, oh awesome. Sue made terra firma content with me today. Moving forward with that as well. Awesome. For those of you that don't know, when you go and you get coaching with Andy Lasavita and he knows what you do, he refers you to people who can then give you jobs. Good luck on that. I tell her I said hello and I lots of luck to you, really. How you doing, Sandra? Great to see ya. Catherine B. Uh, John Bailey. Uh, wait, can I can I say something about this? Uh, two two things. If you uh, if you wanted to join the job search boot camp, we had this promotion that ended on uh, the twenty fifth of November, where we ran a big promotion, a great package. There was a discount off the base product. If you want to get in that program, you can send us an email and say I was on Andy's live show today. And or I saw the replay of the live show and Andy said, if I want to get the $100 off, I should email you and do that to support at milewalk.com. Uh, perhaps Kara, somebody can drop that in the, in the chat and we will, I will give you the discounted rate if you make the effort to send me the email. Otherwise, it's $597, uh, but you can, you can have it for 497 
the career accelerator program of which for somebody like uh, John, not this John, but pre John filing um, in the leadership program in my leadership uh, monthly live, it's my leadership monthly coaching program. Uh, and we have a, we have a session on December 11th on the, my annual reflection process. It's really a great, it's really a great, great session coming up, but it's really a great program. Uh, I give away some pretty sweet bonuses in that program. And when you join, even if you, you have two options, you can join on the monthly plan or you can join on an annual plan. It, the monthly plan is $49. If you are in my job search boot camp already, so the job search side, we give you a price break to $39 if you want to pay month to month for the leadership development program. If you want to get it on the annual basis, it's $297. So it's basically half price. Uh, so that would come out to be, you know, less than 25 bucks a month if you paid one time. And when you do that in either package, you get my five module $400 career accelerator program as a bonus. And if you go on the annual program, you get my goal setting masterclass as a bonus as well. So there are perks there. And, but, but John, in this, in this rollout of the boot camp job search boot camp, the career accelerator was, is, is, is not there. So uh, but for any of you that are interested, because I know we had a lot of people jump in the leadership program as well, and uh, I'm actually going to be sending you guys uh, a, a, a message on Wednesday the 9th with uh, just how I look at reflection, some of the, the things that I do. Reflection, folks, is not thinking about uh, where your life is. It's not about thinking about, well, how's my marriage and what, is my career going okay, and it's not any of that stuff. Reflection is looking back at activities that have and experiences that have occurred and learning how to interpret what happened and then how to apply that in the future. You have the ability to, to make whatever you want, the meaning you attach to any experience that you have, but you can't do that unless you stop you know, moving a mile a minute and you actually think about what happened and then interpret it correctly and get value from the moments. So I'm going to teach you how to do that on December 11th. That is Friday, December 11th. Okay, those are little plugs for my programs. Eliza, what are we doing here? Eliza Dixon interview recovery from question regarding unfortunate incident in your past. If the interviewer gets in a follow-up question, what is the best way to get out of the sand trap? Can you use humor? I would not use humor. If somebody asks me, now I wish I would have known exactly what the question was, but uh, I know what you do. I know the field you're in, and I know the types of jobs that you are interviewing for. Uh, I'm assuming... Uh, I'm taking a guess at what I, I won't announce it. I'm taking a guess at what I think might be the case. But uh, if you do get tangled up, I always focus. Okay, so I just got done. The balloon's still hanging out, right? About reflection and interpretation. Depending, Eliza, what the situation was, I am all about the positives I learned and why I'm a better person. And it, it goes to, you know, I'm so thankful. Grat every everything in our lives is processed through gratitude. You can only interpret things properly if you actually have the right mindset and gratitude is a major part of it. I'm thankful for the, the situation. You know, here's the takeaway, right? Here's what I learned and I'm such a better person because and now I know this and this is how I apply it going forward. I don't know the exact, you know, what the follow-up question was, but when I'm explaining something that's sticky that that's what it is one thing you can check out eliza i do and i don't know exactly what the question was or what the first or second question was but i do have a video out there on uh tell me about your your biggest failure i think it's uh stacy i don't um stace can you tell me is that the one it's on youtube and it's 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 i think it's like tell me about your biggest failure but the packaging of what i just said is embodied is embodied in there too. It might be something to check out that might apply. Uh, let me know. Uh, hit me. Well, you can send me an email direct. So if uh, if you need more color, hope that helps. And Beth, my new leader. That's a pretty sweet gift, huh? 
Alice, uh, I, I believe a recruiter ghosted me about a position working for the CEO of an elevator company. Could I call the office of the CEO to inquire about the position? Okay, so uh, Alice, what you did not tell me is, was this a corporate recruiter or a third party recruiter? Okay, so the answer is yes or no, depending on which one it is. If you got connected with a corporate recruiter who is working at the elevator company, like a Westinghouse or something like that, and they decided not to call you back, then I would not be calling the, C you know, the office of the CEO. If a third party recruiter called you, raised the opportunity to you, and then said, okay, there's this opportunity and I want, I want you to, I want to engage you in this with my client and they're not getting back to you, then you go through a series of follow-ups and you reach back to the recruiter, just say, wanted to see if the opportunity was still there and if you're going to move me forward. If the recruiter says, if the recruiter gets back to you and says, I've presented other candidates or I found other candidates that I thought were, were a better match, you going to the office of the CEO is futile and I would not do it. If the response back to you is dead silence, so no response, then you can go, right? Because, But what I would do before I did that is I would send the recruiter the first email. I wanted to check back in. Is this open? And if it is open, am I still a potential candidate? If there's dead silence, I might wait a week. And with this one, you do not need to fuss around. I'd wait a week and say, I wanted to try you one more time. Uh, I appreciate you're busy. If I don't hear back from you, bye. Give them a date. I'm going to reach out to the organization myself. If that doesn't get a response, then, then you do not need to have one ounce of guilt by trying to go direct. Okay, there's a reason that that recruiter is not getting back to you. So, uh, so that's what I would do. That's how I would handle it. I hope, I hope it goes well. And I hope I got, I hope I fit, Got your answer in there based on those different scenarios. Karen, how you doing? Deb, my boot camper, hey to you. Daniel, how are you? Great to see you. The boot camp warms me up. See, you you guys, I mean, look. He's in Austin and it warms him up. The job search boot camp. Come on, everybody's doing it. Everybody, everybody's everybody's doing it. Come on, come join me. You got Daniel, you got you got Deb, Daniel, Joseph, Sal. All boot campers, right there. I love it. I love it. You guys are awesome, and I'll see you on the 17th, too. Eric Jackson, I am using the boss hunting email, and I seem to be getting responses to put uh, my info in the ATS because they have to view applicants for the ATS for legal reasons. They do. They do. Are they telling me no? No. They're telling you yes. Okay. So, uh... Andy Lasavita School of Living Life. Any, any action you take, or even if you're just sitting there and something was acted upon you, the immediate reaction is, I'm sure that was for my own good because life happens for me, not to me. What can I do with this right now? Okay, I sent a boss hunting letter. I'm Eric Jackson. I sent a boss hunting letter and the boss said, hey, Eric, Thanks for reaching out. I'm assuming something of this nature. Would you please put your resume in the applicant tracking system? What can I do with this right now? I immediately go back to the boss. I say, Thank gratitude. Thank you so much for uh, responding. And I appreciate the direction. I will do that right now. Thank you. Second thing you say is, I'd love to be able to follow up with the recruiter or whoever is in charge, the human resources person, whoever's in charge of recruiting for this position to ensure they got my application and were able to review my resume. Would you be open to sharing with me who that person is so I could follow up with them in a week or so? Question mark. Right, off it goes. And one of two things is going to happen. They're either going to get, and then I would put my resume in the applicant tracking system, but I would also do one other thing. So you got a couple of lanes here we got to go through. You go back to the recruit or to the hiring official. They're going to do one of two things: dead silence, or I'm not sharing. Sorry, one of three things. Or here's the name. Okay, any of those 
if it's dead silence you don't need to worry if it's I'm not sharing the name say okay I appreciate it thank you very much I I will try to stay in touch with you hopefully this will be positive okay and then the the other option is here's the person in in the first or in the sorry in the second or third scenario so dead silence here's an actually dead silence or I'm not giving you the name I would try to find the recruiter and I would say to them uh, I I uh, wanted to reach out because I'm applying to your organization I I uh, so and so asked me to put the re my resume in the applicant tracking system which I did I wanted to follow up with you or whoever is the appropriate person who's recruiting for this position to see if you had a chance to review my resume so and so told me to put it in the applicant tracks which they did right you didn't say I know so and so you said so and so told me okay so now what's what's the inference on their part and the implication on your part I know this person right so that's what I would do and then if if you can't figure out who the recruiter is or the human resources person is then you know you take your you take your shot but that's that's how I would go through that so if you don't get the name if they dead silence back from the hiring official or they don't give you the name then you take a shot if they give you the name then you put it in their applicant trace and you send it again to the recruiter just say hey I, I, I wanted to reach out to you directly because I, I appreciate how um, you know many applications you probably have in the applicant tracking system so I just wanted to send this to you directly so you'd have it I would appreciate you blah 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 there you go right so you got this so you're all covered what can I do with this right now right that kind of stuff then what would I do because the last of a school live in life let's say a month goes by right back to the hiring official hey I wanted to check in with you I hadn't heard anything back I did apply I did apply I even tried to reach out to this person thinking that might help but I haven't heard anything back so I wanted to check back in with you on two things number one see if there's you know any if the you know any opportunity to work with you and if not uh, would would you be you know is there anybody as you can see I'm job searching is there anybody else you know that I might be able to connect with in your network or any other recommendations you have it's a low priority for me but if it's a company that I really really want to work for here you got to remember something folks on the one hand you might hear me say don't spend a lot of time following up with people who aren't getting back to you and that's true but when you are automated meaning because what went into my calendar was immediately I talked to him he did this I put it in the applicant tracking system where's my damn where's my damn note card I'm here right this is what's happening but this iteration is what is the follow-up that says what does it say 30 days out if I don't hear anything there's an alert in my calendar that says email that guy there's nothing to the follow-up the follow-up is boilerplate that I already generated I cut it I pop it on top and I send it takes me 10 seconds alert copy paste forward go that's that's when you're in the groove right like when you when you got your system set up and you got your boilerplate set up and 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 you plan it the night before so that when you wake up you know if I don't hear by tomorrow that email's going out at eight o'clock hell I might even schedule that email so so that's the way I would do that when somebody gets back to you that is gold that is that is your first goal I need to elicit a response what can I do with that response well the response is hey come on in for an interview you go in for an interview the response is hey we're not hiring okay you go back to them what can you do with that all right I really would have loved to work for you do you know anybody right hey who's the recruiter can I get the recruiter in my my resume in there anyway just so you have it in your system but what can I do what can I do what can I do don't stop till you're till you're done Eric Jackson that was a great one thank you hope that helped hello MS baby girl oh how you doing Miss Amelia my mother can we all give my mother a shout out you know you know my mom comes here to make sure you guys are all being nice to me right you know that she does not like it when people are mean to her her baby boy actually I'm not the baby boy I'm the firstborn boy oh man love you mom LaShawn how you doing another boot camper Pilar thank you for that I uh I do try to be energetic because I love this stuff 
Flying Uber Tuber, always nice to see you. MTO, great to see you, my boot camper. No polo logo today. No, I do, I do, I do like my polo clothing. Hey, Sam, you know what? I was, uh, uh, this morning, I was uh, doing my little thinking and, and, and I was thinking about you. And you know what I was thinking? I haven't seen Sam in there for a while. Hey, bud, I hope you're doing great. I hope all the stuff that you the that you emailed me about went well, and I hope you are totally on the mend and everything is going great. Sherry, how are you? Okay, wait. Uh, Kara is t- sending me a question. She says, Annie, do you want to address this question? Jason Lalonde, Annie, the leadership classes, do you list what you cover for several months out in advance? So... Uh, we we have uh, what normally what we do is we have a, a yearly schedule, and which actually will be being published here shortly for 2021. Uh, we do have topics that we are going to cover, but as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I have uh, topics that I'm going to cover. So f- first thing you got to know, there's th- th- a few things you want you got to know about this. Number one, if you get in the leadership program. You got a backlog of like two years of stuff that you need to go through. Okay, I'm mean, like it's really good. So you're you immediately get to see uh, a, a lot of it. I I I advertise that I will keep six months, but I have bonuses in there and other things that I want to remain in there for life because it's it's that foundational. Everybody loves it. I mean, it's all the back stuff. So you you will never be able to watch it all. It is it is you're gonna have to pick and choose. And then each month, what happens is we have usually something either uh, majorly foundational or topical. Like so, when when COVID hit, we had certain things related to dealing with unexpected changes, working remotely, other things, and will be thematic. Like December, we're gonna do reflection. Guess what January is about? How to get anything you want in life? Okay, the wedging of the one percenters and why is it? that some people are able to push the door open just when it's cracked the jar, but everybody else looks at it like it's closed. And there's goal setting stuff, all, all that kind of stuff, very, very topical. And the other thing that I wanted to mention is on December 11th, we have a reflection session, but on December 18th, I had drinks with my leaders uh, at like, uh, I think it's three o'clock in my afternoon. Some of them will be early morning, some of them will be midday, and some of them will be nighttime where we're going to be going through uh, what they would like to talk about because I'm nothing if not democratic. So I want to understand what's important to them and not just topics, but additional services that they want related to the program. It's really, it's, it's really fun stuff. And if any, if I got a bunch of any leaders, I know I got a bunch of leaders here. If you want to share, it's, it's, it's really good. So, um, so yeah, the leaders are hogging up some of the Fridays in, uh, in December. Uh, but it's, 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 it's pretty good. And, and we, we used to put out like four or five months in advance what the topics are going to be. But, you, if, but I will say this. If you're joining and like you're trying to join for a specific topic, number one, I probably covered it already, but number two, that's not the mindset of the person who, who embraces this leadership program. This is a continual education, ongoing stuff that you never get taught for a price that is very inexpensive and high value and it's it's everything about you know about building you up so it's about operating inside the corporations building your businesses operating just you know spiritually sound and mentally sharp uh, i've covered habits focus you name it making big decisions uh, communication in several fashions, listening, communicating to send your message, communicating to understand psychologically what's happening. So there's a, a giving present persuasive presentations. I mean, it's a it's a pretty pretty good pretty good package, pretty good package. So yes, thanks for that, Kara and Jason. I appreciate that question. Danielle Phillips, how you doing? Usual. What what was I asking? Usual. I miss you too, Laura. What was usual? Well, I, 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 already, I was so locked in at whatever I was doing, I'm not really sure what that was. All right. April J., will you please give advice on negotiating benefits other than salary? Is it proper to talk about vacation lead, time off prior to being hired, 
or does it send the wrong signals? Okay, there's a couple questions in here. These are pretty good. All right, April J, about negotiating anything. Uh, literally, and I'm not being funny here, everything is negotiable. Everything. Even when they tell you it isn't. Okay, so now, they may not give in to you, or they may say, we're drawing the line there. I just coached a woman week before last, living in Florida, going to a, a design agency. They said, two weeks vacation, non-negotiable. She got three, right? Two extra week, five total, right off, right? We don't give no more, no more, no more. Extra week, right? It, somebody else, they wanted him to move in two months. Both of these are boot campers. Wanted him to move in two months. He got two years, right? So, so, so everything is negotiable. Now, I have talked about this before in a number of videos, and I would definitely check out my salary negotiation playlist. But April, for you, the one important thing that you want to do is the tactic you need is when you say, is it proper to talk about vacation lead time off prior to being hired and any of that stuff? So let's go backwards because it, it really kind of fits in what I want to share. You should, if it's major and soon, discuss that you are going to be gone on a vacation. It is not something for you to sweat. Employers totally understand that your life was scheduled, right? You're changing jobs. You may have a vacation planned with your family. You may have mom coming in from Europe. They, it, whatever it is. Okay, maybe you're going to Hawaii. I don't, I don't know, which is whatever it is. You need to, I would let them know in 99% of the cases, it will not be an issue. Okay, now there are some organizations that it might be a little uncomfortable. They may say, well, you know, you're only going to be able to have three weeks vacation in the first year and you already have a month planned in August to go to Europe, whatever it is, you're going to have to take unpaid leave for a week. Okay, well, that's entirely up to them and you can figure that out. But to, to address your first question, never, never negotiate anything. And I mean never and anything until you get down to the end. Okay, so tactically when you say negotiating benefits, I don't care if you're negotiating vacation. I don't care if you're negotiating profit sharing percentages, 401k matches, personal time, working from home. Anything any of you can think of, none of it should be negotiated until the very end. And why is that such a big deal? Well, number one, and I've said this till I was blue in the face, is you want to do it when your stock is highest so you are increasing the likelihood that you will get what you want. However, secondarily and just as importantly, is you want to show up to the negotiating table not having taken a thing along the way. Because what does that do? So let me give you an example. And I've talked about this one a few times. But whether it's benefits, whether it's vacation time, whether it's work from home, whether it's the relocation time, the relocation expenses, the relocation payback period, anything, you, restricted stock units, incentive stock, you name it all. If any of that is discussed and granted to you before you get to the negotiating table, you are already in debt. Okay, what do I mean? Well, Andy, you know, uh, we really only have a two-week vacation policy. Oh, you know, I'm coming from this company and I, I got four. You know, I, I know four might be a stretch, but three seems more appropriate. You know what, Andy? No problem. For you, we're going to make an exception three weeks. All right, now I owe them one back, all right, because they gave me something. I took it, all right? You know, I don't really want to come into the office five days a week. Can we make it three? Well, we really want everybody in the office, but for you, okay. Now, this doesn't happen all at once. A lot of times this is sprinkled in along the way. So what are you doing? You're taking, taking, taking. So you're putting yourself in a hole and you don't even know it. Now you get to the end. But April, April, you, you didn't want 100,000, you wanted 110. You didn't want a $10,000 bonus, you wanted a 20, right? You didn't want two weeks vacation, you wanted four. You didn't want 1% profit sharing match, you wanted two. You needed additional benefits for whatever. You needed vacation leave early. Now imagine you're going to go through all this. You have a greater likelihood when that is a consolidated package. 
And I'm not going to go into all the what to say and the scenarios, uh, but trust me when I tell you, you need to keep pushing things off until the end. If they say, April, you know, uh, we can we can visit your vacation days. You know what I'm thinking? It's, we can give you three weeks. You know what? We don't need to discuss that. I'm sure we can discuss that at the end. Push it, push it, push it. Okay, just keep pushing everything, and then when you come to the end, you've increased. Now you're even, Stephen. You're starting. On, you're starting on an even playing field. You haven't taken anything. Your stock is the highest. You haven't asked for anything, and you haven't taken anything. Okay, this goes for all you people that ask me every single day. Hey, Andy, I see this job, but I don't want to move. But they tell me it needs to be in the office. No, interview. Go. Get locked in. Get them to love you. Negotiate at the end. Okay, you, you cannot imagine what goes through an employer's mind when they spend three weeks or three months trying to recruit you to get you down to the end only to find out that there's this silly thing about you not wanting to relocate when you could very well do this job from home. They don't want to spend another three months looking for you, right? So they break. They find the time. They find the money. They find the ability to do it. All right. So you, but you're, you're trying to negotiate when you're weak. So April, it doesn't matter what you're asking for. You go in with the whole, the whole kit and kit and caboodle. So I looked at all this based on the value I'm going to add, based on what I'm going to do, based on the experience I'm bringing, all that stuff I told you I'm coming with this and that, my network and so on and so forth. And my bright bubbly face and all the stuff. This is, this is it. 120. 20%, four weeks vacation, and you ask for all of it. And then they say, well, hang on, we can't change that. That's a you know corporate-wide thing, and we can't muck with the 401k plan. All right? I'll bend on that. Right? You bent on something they couldn't change, but it looks like a bend psychologically to them. So then they're looking for the levers where they can play. Well, so now if you're negotiating with me, I'm doing stuff like this to you. What's more important to you, the salary or the time off? Now, we're, now I'm making you trade with yourself. Okay, that kind of stuff. And it appears like it's a choice because it is a choice, except, except I was locked in on something. And now what you're doing is you're having to choose within the constraints I'm providing, but you don't know that. So, so you got to think about all this, but you, you, you make your ask at the end and it doesn't matter what you're asking for. I really want to work here, but I, I, if I, 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 can't, I can't move. My, 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 my mom's sick. Uh, I, I can't move. My kid's in school. Oh, you want me to move? I'm willing to move. You don't want to pay the full freight for me to move? It's going to cost me 18 grand. Can you pay me that somewhere? Right? Like all this stuff can be discussed. Do not think one size fits all. I had a guy on my YouTube channel yesterday. You think I don't read these things? I wake up in the morning, I go through a routine, I go to my YouTube channel, the comments on my blog and the comments in the Milo Academy and I answer all the Milo Academy stuff and I read through all the YouTube stuff. And he said on one of my salary videos, he said, you know, folks, you need to listen to this because I've interviewed, you know, I've worked at Colgate and Palm Island and this and that and you know, all these brand chip companies he puts on there. He's like, it's always negotiable. It, even when they tell you it's not, it, it always is. And you should listen to what Andy's saying. I mean, it's, it's, it's true, even though you think it's not because you're taking their word for it. And, it. and they actually are telling you what they truly believe, even though when it gets down to the end, they will, they will, they will make accommodations. They do. They do. All right, April, hope that helps. I know salary negotiation is a big one for everybody. Stand your ground and don't, don't take anything until, until you get down to the end. Big mistake. James Lee, my boot camper, how you doing? Lindsay, another boot camper. My boss hunter levers are not getting opened. Five of nine, et cetera, all come up as valid emails using the tip shared. I have been BC, the others. What to do next? Send them via LinkedIn in mail. Uh, we don't know that they're not getting opened. Okay, so they might be getting opened and the, and the read notify or whatever you're using might not be kicking in. Uh, it, it depends. That person might not be there anymore. Any one of a number of things. Try a different route. That's my first reaction. Maureen, how are you? I, I, I had the quietest Thanksgiving of my life. I hope, I hope yours as well. And Mohammed and Bob, great to see you. Phyllis, thank you for the... So my wife categorizes the trees. Like that one back there, that's the farm tree. 
So that's got like the chickens on it and the and the I don't know, deer and the all kinds of stuff. I got in my office the snowman one. So all the ornaments are snowmen. And then the one in the living room is kind of a hodgepodge. And yeah, it's it's it's, it's a whole thing at the La Civita house. It's just really nuts. <laughs> Laura Cobb, how you doing? Jerry, great to see you from Houston. Shoney, my boot camper, referred for a job at E&Y by a friend. HR made email contact and most probably going to get an interview soon. Any tips for prep, resume, template work? You are welcome. So, Shoney, uh, assuming that you have the job description, I'd go through module one of the boot camp and module four of the boot camp, and I would make sure that you ran through this. So you have assets that other people don't. And module four, Shoney, is not just the main, the bread and butter interviewing stuff. It's all the extra stuff about the interrogation of the employer, the making sure you're asking the right questions. It's making sure that you're asking yourself the right questions. It's all the stuff on, um, you know, EE and Y, while a larger, largish organization, I would still also review uh, the the set in there on how to uh, interview with small and medium sized companies because there is stuff in there that's going to be applicable. But I mean, it's a general question. I'm going to give you those general answers, but that's where I would focus and I would go back at that stuff. If uh, you, I'm assuming you've probably seen it, but that's where I would go. Lots of luck. Let me know how it goes. Yeah, do me a favor. Thanks, Laura Cop. You know, so I forget to tell you this. Uh, if you're enjoying this, make sure you're subbed to the channel. It hurts me when you don't get my... Actually, I got a video coming out on, on Sunday about motivation, about how to motivate people. And then on Tuesday, it's about resigning because you're going to have to do that when you get your new jobs in December. And uh, I got a lot of great stuff coming. Uh, and then hit the, hit the thumbs up button. What else did I miss? Share it. Please share it. And if you're not following me on Instagram, get connected with me on Instagram. It's my favorite. It's actually my favorite platform. Multiple videos every day. Multiple quote cards every day. YouTube gets like one video a week. Instagram gets two a day. And if you're not connected directly with me on LinkedIn, feel free to send me a connection request. I love to get connected with you. I love to be connected to my community directly. And I love to see in my feed what you guys are doing, what you're saying, what you're sharing, what you're responding to, what's resonating with you. I can't do that if I'm not, if, you know, if we're not, if we're not connected. I know some of you follow me, but connect with me. So that, that I can I can get your stuff in my in my feed. So I, I always appreciate that. And if you're ever confused, if you go to my LinkedIn platform and you see the follow button, which is is just set as the default, um, click the little dots or the more button, and then drop it'll drop down. It'll say connect, and then click connect and say, Hey, Andy, I was on live office hours today. Love to connect. So that's it. All simple. David Billingham. Hey, is New Zealand. What in the hell time is it? Is it like middle of the night, early morning? The next day. Victor, my boot camper from the left coast. Alexa Taylor, Taylor, how are you doing? John McIntyre. And you are a perfectionist. Oh man, Dana, too. You too. Stacy, good morning. And if you are in the Mile Walk Academy and in the private Facebook group, Stacy launched her video career yesterday. Uh, actually, well, actually, maybe we launched it a few weeks ago, but she 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 posted in the in the group what uh, what we got coming on this month. So great stuff. MTO, I tangled up in perfectionism, trying to let it go. <laughs> I feel like I spent time on it, and why bother? It isn't really my best. Oh no, no. Focus on the whole. Do you know if I would MTO if I would say that every video you would never see a video. Ever, ever, none of these are my best. They can't possibly be. I could always be better, right? So it the focus is on the main goal and usually, usually, because most of us have somebody in our lives, in our work lives or in our life life who, who benefits from us doing whatever we do. That matters. If you need a focal point, focus on them. I focus on they need this, right? It's they need this more than I need this to be perfect. 
okay? And it, it's not just the product itself. It's everything, like like the 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 um the 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 emails that we use when we share this with you and we let you know about this there's a lot of you know there's a lot of things that we could be perfecting that I wanted to do in April 2018 that I still haven't gotten around to because of priorities but you know when somebody comes in they fill in their email address but they don't actually take the book right there's there should be more nurturing I do with with that relationship is there anything else you need? Is there anything else you want to try? Is there any reason you didn't want to pitch in seven dollars? You want, you know, you need. I could show you where my free resource. Are. Things like that. Never got around to it, right? I'm sure I, my business would be better, right? Kind of thing. Get it out. Rely on them. And even if it's something you're doing for yourself, if you feel better, then the people around you are gonna are gonna get a better you. I meditate for me, and I meditate for my wife and my dogs. Okay, like that's what I'm talking about. Do it. Dana cries being a perfectionist is so <laughs> Oh my God. Hey, we're all messed up. Don't worry about it. We've all made it. If you're listening to me, we've all made it. Unless you're unless I've, I'm in the afterlife and you're watching this on a recording. We've all made it this far. 100 percent We're 100 percent through the days, right? We've made it through 100 percent of our days. You'll be fine. Yes, Alexa, my mom is, uh, yes, Alexa Taylor, great question here. On closing an interview, uh, I would check this guy. There's actually a chapter in here. I love this chapter. The chapter title is Closing Time, and then that's followed by the uh, breakup or decision time and the breakup. So I don't know if you can see this. See that closing time? All right, that's how you close the interview. It's on page 78. So check check that out. It's it's seven bucks and you get the ebook, the audio book and another whole booklet um, called How to Interview the Employer, 75 Great Questions to Take to Ask Before You Take Any Job. I mean, it's really good. And that's on page 78. So I hope that helps. Tracy, it's fine. It's fine. Deb Martin, Laura Fitzgerald, how you doing? And Scott, my boot campers, there's it goes a bunch of boot campers right there. And all of you guys, Laura, Tracy, Deb, another Laura, different spelling. Scott. Oh, this is a good one. Dana, how do you feel from from feeling overwhelmed i'm in a job search and trying to take it one step at a time but i'm still overwhelmed by this entire process i'm going to give you my very best one secret of how i i do not get overwhelmed okay the reason we tend to get overwhelmed is why well the obvious one right we're 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 we're, we're thinking about either Oh my goodness, I'm not sure what to do and I don't know what to do next and I need to get a job. Or there's so many things I have to do to get a job. So the whole project is overwhelming, right? I have to put that resume again. Oh my God, Andy's talking about cover letters and job search challenge and what the hell is he talking about with self-awareness stuff? Like, okay, stop all that, all right? Um, You need organization to what you're doing, meaning, all right, look, I don't really know how to write a resume, but I know I need to write a resume. I don't really know how to write a cover letter, but I know I need a cover letter. Boom. I know I got to put it in the applicant track system, or maybe I could send it to somebody, so I got I to gotta get a job interview. Then I got to interview and so on, right? All these things, you know, right? Generally speaking, you can figure out there's an organization to this. There's a step to this. All right. So I try never to think about when I'm doing something, more than five total moves, and I then focus on what I call my one action. So I only think about what is the one next thing that I need to do, okay, at any moment in time. So while my project might have 50 things, I had to write a book once, three times. See this book right here? It's the first book. Didn't know what I was doing. I said, well, I got to pick a topic. 
I got to write, make a writing schedule. I have to have an outline. I have to find a publisher, literary agent, whatever, like write a proposal. This, I didn't know what that, I don't know any of that stuff, right? But I'm not going to worry about that. Just write it down on my list. What's the one thing I need to do right now? Right? So, so Dana, the way to take the overwhelm out of it is if you go watch, I, we have a video on the job search challenge. There's one video out there on the YouTube channel about the job search challenge. That's my favorite place for you to start right now because what that'll do is it will tell you what steps you need each day to reach your goal. Now, it might start in the middle, meaning it says find companies, find people, send your resume and cover letters and so on. Okay, well, hang on. Before I can send the resume, I need to go write the resume. Great. Before I can send a cover letter, I need to go write. What's the next one thing I need to do? All right, first thing I gotta watch it, the video takes 30 minutes. Okay, make your list. And he said, do these things. This will lead to results, right? One thing at a time. You get into job interviews, start watching interview videos, read the book, think about not saying stuff about negotiating salary. <laughs> stuff. So you have to, right? Like the one next step. What is the one next step? Stacy, what's the video? What's the video that I have out there uh, on YouTube where it is about the next step and about how to get it is the exact video that Dana needs and let me know if you're you're um, uh, let me know what you know if you're able to find that uh, I can't remember what we called it but it, 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 it's about making progress Dana and and, here, and here's the other thing overwhelm immediately goes away with momentum and momentum can only be gained through motion right that's where the word comes from all right, so once you get in motion, then everything looks easier because you have experience or you're, you're in motion and then things start to happen. So the problem is when you're thinking about eight things and you don't have any organization to it. Do you know, I know a lot of you think that you can go to my YouTube channel and there's a ton of great stuff there, but think about how overwhelming it actually would be to look at my YouTube channel. I've provided assets there for you, right? And I've packaged them in playlists and those kind of things to try to help you in areas, but you already have to know what area is the problem, right? My job search bootcamp, which is a paid program, person just shows up, opens up the thing, and it says, Andy says, step one, step two, step three, step four. You only need to know what the next thing is. Right, you you got you got to realize how much more efficient that is. That's a paid program, but that's how you need to you need to come up with that organization yourself, and then only do the next step. Only concentrate on the next step. And so I think that will really help. That is a really great question. It really is, uh, Stacy. For the life of me, uh, can you slack me if we know what that video is, um, or or at least you know try to get it to Dana some way somehow. Because I think I think it'll really help her, and you know what I now that I'm thinking about it, it might have been one of the today's tips on Instagram. Uh, you know what you got to. I hope you got that stuff organized. All right, hope that helps. Paridi, hey to you from Charlotte, and Laura, thanks for that. Bill from St. Louis, you are welcome for the book. Uh Laura, you're asking out sight. Uh, the book is called Out of Reach But In Sight, Using Goals to Achieve Your Impossible. It's a quick read. Oh, you guys are great. Oh, look at that. My Betravert. See you on December 11th in the leadership program. What can I do with this right now? So, Laura, th that is good. Those are eight words. They're not in the book. In the afterward, uh, but uh, but yeah, for me, fit oh, look at you! Oh man, you guys came in. You know what? That that's like that's like some folks right there. That 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 came in pretty dang quick. Pretty dang quick. Farah Mars, how are you, Karen Board? Great to see you, Jeff, Eric. Let me see, Jesse, Jesse Style. I've been trying to change careers for years into what I went to school for. I have no experience and no one will hire me because I don't have a license, but I need a job to get a license. Okay. So I really wish you would have told me what it is that you do and, and, and what it is that you studied. And 
any of you career changers um, and any of you kind of like John filing was asking me about the 3690s just as a because I want to give you the best answer not just an answer always make sure you think about what would I need to know so to give you the best advice here I would need to know what you studied what you do now and where you want to go so I those three pieces of data are what I need to answer this question now because I don't have that I, I want to help you and so when I when I when I'm faced with something like this there for you there is a video that I have on the YouTube channel that literally is for uh, for career changing the first seven steps okay the first seven uh, in, if you're in my job search boot camp for the, the number of boot campers who are here there are the four stages and the 12 steps in much more detail inside the job search boot camp program if you want the free stuff I would go to that video first and I would check out my career changer playlist it's out there it's on the YouTube channel and you could watch that if I needed a job to get either practical experience that applied credit in order to get a certification license or whatever then you are going to need to figure out how to get into an organization that will either allow you to do that or more likely you're going to have to take a different function in order to do that so meaning you might not get immediately into what it is that you are trying now going back to the note cards here's how i look at things Everybody right now who needs a job wants it to be done in one step. Well, I need a visa. I live in Germany. I want to come to the U.S. Right? Okay. Well, maybe that's a two-step process if you don't have uh, an uh, in-demand skill. Maybe you need to find a job with an international organization that has locations in Germany and in the U.S. and get in and take it as a two-step process the longer term you look and this goes to Jesse and anybody the longer term you look and the more unified your your effort is the better short-term steps you take to get to where you want to go when our window is short our time frame is short we make bad short-term decisions because we're not thinking about the long term we're thinking about I need to get a job because I need to put food on the table now what I would say to that is you have driving forces that determine that you have that you should take a job so to that I would say if your goal is I need to make money and I need a job then my advice as your coach is then you need to get a job in in an organization that would allow you to get that job eventually because it's a lot it's a lot easier for them to move you um, even many times than it is to hire from the outside and you might be able to beat out other uh, people who have who have some experience but don't know the organization as well so you have to think in multiple steps and and it's not a, it's not ideal but but you're better off taking a step toward somewhere you want to get to right so international company to give me a visa because I'm a no commodity they move me to the US kind of thing or hey I'm in this organization I went to school for I don't know what you went to school for because then I could probably give you some insight into what I would do as far as which roles I would take to try to get into the organization and I also don't know what what uh, experience you have at your disposal that you can lean on but but think in those terms the longer term you think you'll you'll break the steps up what's the hurry right kind of thing I get that you need to get paid but f I don't hold you are. but I changed careers at 50 for no money not thinking I need to make it by 51 thinking I need to make it by 65 right all of a sudden the landscape looks totally different the patience level gets there you don't make rash decisions and you stick with it so I hope I hope that helps Jesse I really do I wish I would know um, that that other those other pieces of data but I hope that helped you oh look at all a lot of you guys got that who's behind me can you guys see her so she's got the she's got the per she she walks around the house she prances around the house with that thing on it's just it's 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 hilarious oh god how are we doing on time 12 43 where does the time go how many people how many people still here come on baby 181 people 
At least, is that right? Mm. You guys are freaking awesome. You really, I love my community. I really do. And you support each other. I love that. All right, Scott, what we got here? Did you ask me this in the system and I have not gotten to this yet? Uh, if so, uh, Kara, can you do me a favor? Scott asked this in the system and I haven't, I still have some r remarks to make. Can you mark this for him at 12, an, an hour and 43 into the session for him? And then we're going to link it inside the system directly to this spot. Uh, Scott, would you recommend cold calling after you send a boss letter to targeted companies or individuals? Now, I will tell you two schools of thought here. Number one, I would do anything I had to do in order to get what I wanted. Okay, I mean, I mean that. Like if I wanted it badly enough, you know my line, my today's line about, you know, the, there's only one reason you, you don't have something you want it, you want, and it's that, that you, you, you didn't want it badly enough, right? You just didn't want it badly enough to do whatever it takes. So in this case though, what I would say is I'm about efficiency and I'm about effort and I'm about systems and I'm about moving smoothly and not disrupting the things that I know to be high probability activities. Now, if you cold call somebody and they actually pick up, okay, because this is really the only time it's a problem, you have got to be so good on the phone that you not only can capture their attention within a few seconds, but get them to the point where they are not totally flat-footed about what you want. And that is very hard to do. Okay, it is. So I don't recommend it unless you are highly skilled at it because I think you can be more effective by emailing people because most people like to be emailed and most people get irritated when somebody calls them in the middle of the day even though they should be irritated with themselves because they never should have picked the phone up in the first place. Now, I would prefer to get the person's voicemail and leave a voicemail, a very short professional voicemail because if I have people leave me some sweet messages and I'm like, damn, I got to call that person back just because that's a damn good message, right? And then I got other people who's like, oh my God, I'm never going to call that person back kind of thing. So it depends. Now, I would rather boss hunt and then I would boss hunt 14 more people in a week, right? And then by the end of the month, I'm going to have, you know, how many companies that I reached out to? For me, probably 100, right? So I'm not really going to care to call that person, but you, you can, and if, if you call me after I've seen your email and I didn't want to talk to you in the first place, I'm just going to be annoyed, right? It's like, oh, I'm going to be annoyed at myself because I should have picked the phone up, and then you didn't get a response from me, and now, you know, now you're calling me. Now, there is somebody out there who's going to say, that Scott, I love that he did that, right? Really showed initiative. But I'm talking probability and odds here, and most people won't. So I I would not recommend, so no, I would not recommend that. Can you do it? Sure, right? I You know, anything's worth a try. So that's those are my thoughts on that. Doug, how are you? Are you riding your bike? Dude, I rode my bike this morning in the house. Actually, you know what I did this morning? I actually I, 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 I <laughs> the bike so I could create the talk, so I could know what I was going to tell you. And so then I just rehearsed it on. I kind of ran through it in my on my head, uh, you know, as as I was biking. All right. Anyway, Doug, what position would you put in LinkedIn if someone took time off from a career? I would put nothing, zero. Uh, I heard you won't show up in LinkedIn searches if you don't have a current position. That's not true. Okay, I don't know who told you that, but uh, I would not worry uh, if you are, and then it gets sketchy. Like if you're, if for any of you that are volunteering right now, uh, if you have your own consulting business where maybe you're doing some part-time work, you can certainly put that. But I, if you don't have a current position, you don't have a current position. If it ended in 2018, it ended in 2018. That's your most recent position. That's what will come up in the LinkedIn search. Your, your, your headline, your title, your picture, and whatever is your latest thing. I would not, I would not 
be worried. I mean, just, you know, do, do your best and hopefully it wasn't all that long ago. But that, that's what I would do. Sal, it is not hard to send something that's not perfect. I want you to remember this. Sal, 1248, in case you want to rewind it. My dog was running through the wind, right? Dog was running through the screen. Andy said, send the damn letter. Andy said, send the damn email. Sending it. Consistency trumps everything. Even if it's a 5 out of 10. Send it. You Practice. You know, I've told you this before, and any of you, if you're worried that stuff is not perfect, then what you do is you try it out, you test it. So I, I, I don't know, uh, I, I just, I told you about the Facebook program that we did some advertising. This is, this is what you should do. Now, we were going to advertise uh, something like the a resume writing program or job search program or something like that, like the, like a free program. And there's about 10 problems that people had related to the program. So we wanted to determine which problem got the most attention. Now, this is not like a split test, like some of you in marketing would say, well, try this A and try this B and try this C or D and see which one works better. These were not even full-blown advertisements. I didn't even actually do anything. We wrote a sentence that was a fragment. There was a picture of me and we put it on Facebook and I paid to see which ones got the most clicks. And that was it. And then it just gave me data. And so I said, oh, I should, we should focus on those three things instead of those seven things or something like that. Okay, now why am I telling you this? Well, first off, it would be like you sending a cover letter. Literally, this is the analogy. You send a cover letter to a boss and the cover letter is empty. Okay, cover letter's got nothing. It's got a attached word document with nothing in it. And you got your resume there. I guarantee you, people will get back to you even with an empty cover letter. And that's a hook test, right? It, it was empty. Why do people do that? Because the person just looked at your email, opened your resume, and that was enough. And they weren't going to bother doing anything else. Then the email saw back. So if you want to try stuff like this, or maybe you put cover letters in there with one sentence or whatever, or write cover letters just to see what happens and send them to 15 companies you don't care about and you don't even care if they don't get back to you. And that could be your Andy Lasavita version of a hook test. I mean, literally, we had one line and a picture of me. That was it. Didn't say anything about the program. <laughs> you click a button and then you went to the page and they could, they could sign up for the program. And a bunch of them did with nothing there. That's what your cover letter is like. I, wait, I cannot stress this enough. That is about how useful a cover letter is. So, yes, I want you to have a good one just in case. But 99% of the time, people aren't even opening them. So how about that? You, how about that? You're not sending stuff out that people don't even care about anyway. And you're worried. And it's preventing you from making progress. Wait, I'm glad I went off about that. Especially because it was you, buddy. All right, let me see. We got not Linda Joy Hood, my boot camper. What do we got here? You are a bee camper. I have an interview with a company that I think is a little different in that I am going to interview with the team. I will be joining, not just the management. Any unique advice? Yes. I want you to go into module four of the boot camp. I want you to focus on the part where I talk about how to get them to care about you and understanding what motivates them. Because if you are interviewing with the team, what does the team care about? Can I get along with her? Am I going to learn from her? And is she open and welcoming to my ideas? Can we cross train each other? Things of that nature. Is she going to be proficient so that she's lightening up the workload, not making me going to have to do more because she can't carry her weight, right? Like all of these things go to their motivation. You need to know what those are, and but but you can you can go into the interview with preconceived notions that will be pretty good, right? I just gave you three that they're going to care about. Then when you get into the into the interview. I want you to elicit information from them about what they care most about. 
What matters to you most? What would be most helpful? The person who compliments your team the best. I, I understand, you know, I understand this is the job description, but in your words, teammates, what part of all of this or what skill sets of all of this or what kind of person related to this is the one that perfectly fits your team? Tell me that. I'd love to understand that so that I could, you know, highlight my background in relation to that kind of stuff. So you want to elicit what matters to them most. It's a great question. All right, listen, folks, I have got to get running. couple things really quick. Sunday, I've got a video coming out uh, on, on uh, motivating people. On Tuesday, i got a video coming out on resigning. Next Thursday, i got another package like this uh, at live office hours. We'll do Q&A and all the whole goop blah. And then uh, the following Sunday... Uh, we've got a little email series and a booklet for you to help you with job search diag uh, uh, diagnosing. I think it's, no, sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, next Friday, I got the leadership uh, group coaching session on reflection. And then Sunday is, is that little email series to really help you with diagnosing your job search. And then I do have a job search bootcamp private coaching session on December 17th. And then if you're in the leadership group, we got the cocktail party on 18th. And uh, then we got some other stuff. So, but that that's a few weeks out. I hope you can join me for any and all. And if you are interested in any of those programs, uh, let, let us know. We're happy to answer any questions or give you more insight. I always appreciate any of the questions related to those and, and want to help you at the deepest level. All right, share this. If I didn't get to your question, I'm, I'm sorry. You're welcome to drop it into the comments because uh, YouTube's going to record this. And uh, otherwise, everybody have a, have a great weekend and I will see you on Sunday. All right, take care. You be good.